I had the honor and privilege to sit down with a dear friend today, Hazel Lerman. Hazel has built a career within corporate South Africa that has focused on not only growing herself and developing herself and her roles, but developing and empowering others. Hazel is a respected business mentor who says that mentorship and the development of those around her are not only a pillar of her business life, but also her personal life. We touched on many important lessons and Hazel shared with us what we need to do and how we need to see the world in order to grow and develop. She shared multiple tips with us that are easy to apply and will have immediate and profound effects on our lives. This is not one that you want to miss, particularly if you are looking at growing your personal life or your business career. Welcome to Coffee and Conversations with Champions, the Leadership Edition. All right, so Hazel Lerman, welcome to Coffee and Conversations with Champions. And you are here because you are a champion. How are you doing? Thank you, Nick. I'm good. Thank you, Nick. Um, I always said that when I get onto Coffee with Champions that I've arrived. So um, thank you for the invitation. I, I, I think I'm we excited do... about the conversation. I think we can do this one. You ready? You know, my, my goal in life was always to be like Alex J or Tony Blewett, you know, in the 80s and 90s, you know, those old school DJs, you'd be like. <laughs> so, no, you've always been up, Nick. <laughs> and that's, I'm Nick, I'm a nudnik, absolutely. So Hazel, welcome. It means a lot for me to have you here because you and I have a lot of history and you've always been a very, very serious inspiration to me. Uh, from the, when we met, I think it was before the war uh, <laughs> in Liberty. Um, can, can I say even when the canteen was subsidized? So <laughs> I think. I, yeah. So like, yeah, it was crazy because I think I got King Clip with baby potatoes and it was seven rand fifty. I don't know if that sounds right or maybe 17 rand or something like that. It was crazy. Hey, nine, it was many years ago. Those are not the prices anymore. No, not the prices anymore. But it was it was a special place to sort of learn. And, you know, the, the skills that I picked up from uh, IT uh, pre-contract training and uh, initial training program have helped me through my career and through everything. It's been unbelievable. So, you know, that's where you and I met. And then you were pretty much like one of my first clients. I think it was Shira and you that started that you backed me when I started the gym and it was a lot right of fun right at the beginning. And you took your fitness journey all the way up to doing crazy stuff like the Jerusalem marathon and these other inspirational things. And then watching your journey, you know, it's funny. Usually um, I let the, the, the guests sort of do a bit, bit of their own intro. So I'm doing your intro here <laughs> and then see well, when we know each other so well. <laughs> absolutely. It, it's awesome. And for me, the seeing the stuff that you do with the young ladies where you sort of you're an inspiration, you're a guide, you're a mentor, you're a counselor, all of these incredible things that you do to give back. So can you tell our audience a little bit of who you are? Who is Hazel? Who is the awesome sure. Hazel? Thank you for that. Um, so I think first and foremost, I'm a daughter. I'm a sister and I'm a friend. Um, I try and invest as far as possible in relationships. Um, I don't believe that anything just happens by accident. Um, anything that you do in life, you've got to put time into and you've got to work at it. Um, so so that's, I guess, where I started, um, you know, as, as where I started as Hazel. Um, in terms of myself, um, I had a pretty awful school career. Um, I wasn't a good student. I grew up in the times and the mindset where you were told what you couldn't be mm -hmm. as opposed to what you could be. Um, and that kind of shaped a lot of my early years. And um, I guess I lost a lot of my early years due to that. Um, but 
Do you, do you want to touch on that a little bit more? Because I think so many people are going through that, that we think yeah. that school sets our life and that's who we should be because these people clearly know better. Or not these people, the system knows better. The system. And, and, and Nick, I do I have to caveat this by saying mm. that I do think that the school system is different now and better mm. now to what it was when I was at school. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, I don't want to really also talk about how old I am, but I am much older than I look. Um, uh, you matriculated and, you know, in, 20, was, in 2005, right? Thank you, Nick. That's why we love you. Um, so, so I think, you know, there weren't many female role models. Mm-hmm. Um, it was kind of a generation where um, the mindset, even from when we were little, is don't touch that. You can't do this. Mm. If you don't eat your food, you won't get your dessert. Is that that negative kind of connotation mindset um, and upbringing. And I think that's kind of the conventional way that a majority of us have been brought up over the years. Um, And then I went to school. um, I didn't enjoy the school system. I was the fat kid. I was probably the ugly kid. Who knows? I mean, I don't know. Um, And never the ugly kid. I didn't didn't invest in school because I didn't believe in myself because nobody Mm. else believed in me. Sure. Um, Um, I was lucky that I had a very bright brother. So, um, you know, he was the one that was going to look after the family. So, <laughs> and, and he's done very well in life. But um, that, that's kind of how I, I went through my whole school career, um, where mediocrity and just passing was actually good mm. enough because that was who you were capable of being. Right. Um, then I went to school, I went to varsity. Um, I knew exactly what I wanted to do. Um, six months in, I knew that I was going to die a slow death if I continued with that direction. So I guess that's kind of when I started finding myself and knowing a little bit about who I was, um, developing a little bit more confidence, um, doing things. I I, um, then found a job, had a student go to pay off. I had to find a job. I had uh, a Mm -hmm. matric certificate and, um, you know, uh, six months or one year in the Vitz canteen. (laughs) It's not exactly um, a recipe for success. Yeah. But anyway. (laughs) Um, I, I got a job and, and, and my mindset was I was going to learn a couple of basic things. I was going to commit to two years. I was going to have something on my CV and I was going to go out in the big wide world. Mm. Well, as you will well know, I'm still in that same employment. Um, fortunately, I've been very blessed to have done many, many jobs within that um, employer. But um, I've just kind of been exposed to awesome people along the way who just set me on a trajectory um, and exposed me to what is possible as opposed to this is what you're meant to be and this is who you're going to be. And you're a woman, so therefore women are bank tellers and housewives, you know. So I've I've been very blessed that I've had a lot of um, mentors and role models. And um, in the early days of my career, not many female mentors because there weren't any. So it's Mm. not that there weren't successful females around but there weren't any in my industry um so it was really difficult to say i want to be like that so i role modeled myself on a lot of behaviors and attributes of other people that i was fortunate to be mentored by and um be led by and you know some of those people have really shaped who i am today and i guess to go back to your question about you know what i do today is i i feel this moral obligation to pay back to other people who actually might be blocked, may not know how to go about things, may be feeling similar to what I was back in the day. Um, yeah, so that's that's a bit about my background and a little bit about who I am. And and that journey has also, um, I guess, taken me not only through my career, which, you know, I've been very blessed and privileged to have a great career with many opportunities. Um, I'm not really scared of trying new things or going into the unknown. So um, I build and fix and mm-hmm. shape and leave a solid foundation and then go and do something else. But um, I'm also really invested in knowing myself better and um, from an education perspective and from an introspective um, perspective. Right. And then also I've, um, I've done a whole lot of coaching courses and personal development courses so that I can formally pay that back and, and help other people um, with formal qualifications um, and coupled with life skills and um leadership development experience i guess that's where i am today sure that's it, it, it's you all, absolutely awesome where you've come through because i can relate as well you know school taught me that i was stupid and through no fault of my amazing teachers or my friends but when you look around and you see everyone flying academically and they're making it look so easy 
and you working so hard just to pass um, and then that falls away you know, and then you know for me it was I gave up on myself so it was cramming the night before or maybe two days before and I just thought like I was lazy and a procrastinator but it just there was no joy in it um, but how important how important was that sense in school of you know not being able to be who you are not being able or not even you know, being able to find find out who you are in and those sort of restrictions in leading you down the path of being such an incredible lighthouse to so many people you know nick um i have this conversation often with people um both based on my career and my and my upbringing which was a, an upbringing of love and family but certainly you know we weren't on the bread line, but we didn't have an abundance of funds. So things right. were tight. And, um, you know, when you're going through it and you're a kid and you don't really understand why so-and-so has got this and why learning comes easy to somebody else, mm. etc., it's really, really hard. But given the opportunity to have my life over, would I change what I went through at school or um, growing up? Not a chance. Because I do think that that forms the basis of who you are and it gives you the strength and the character and the wisdom from which to springboard into the next um level mm -hmm. and and by the way i mean i didn't do well at school and i hated the school system and i certainly didn't relate to learning about parallelograms or the rainfall pattern in ghana or you know those oh, kind of things, that have things had no I know. <laughs> no, you know they've had absolutely no impact in my life but um since i've done other learning which has been voluntary learning so the degree mm. that i did and i went back very late to university so i did finally get a degree even though i spent, I spent the first year of varsity after school in the bits canteen but those those things i did really well in and i think there was two factors there number one i was ready to prove to myself who i could mm. be and yeah. number two you're studying later in life you know why you're doing it you're paying the bills you you there's a purpose there's something driving you so you invest mm -hmm. in it so did it come easy no not at all i worked really really hard mm -hmm. because i'm not an academic but i've done well academically because yes. of the the mindset the effort the commitment and i think it's it's no different to you in the gym you know you remember me from those early days where i literally walked up 10 steps to get into the gym and i couldn't breathe yeah to then being able to participate in a marathon and it's no different with studying or anything else that we set out to do it's about taking that first step doing what it takes and just believing you can whether that can is 50 percent pass mark mm -hmm. or an 80 percent pass it doesn't matter it's just believing in yourself it's it's such an incredible thing that you talk about and i think the self-belief comes from being able to do what you love and enjoy right it's it's huge where if you, you, you do stuff so early in life that we have to in primary school and in high school. But, you know, for me, as an example, what, what you reminded me of was joining Liberty's initial training program and being terrified and sitting there with Barry Mocky the first day and, you know, realizing like, hang on, I enjoyed everything that was discussed. And Liberty was very ahead of the curve at the time because we learned everything on PowerPoint. And right. for me, learning in pictures was something that my standard eight, nine, and 10 geography extra lesson teacher, who actually happened to be one of my instructors in karate, one of my senseis, yes. taught, summarized the entire ge metric geography syllabus into eight pages of drawings. And that was the highest mark I ever got. So it's the. That's your this, yeah, that's it. It's not. It's you, we need to find the system that we can learn best in. We need to find what we love to learn and then build our self-worth from there. Because, I mean, I, still to this day, I could not imagine going to university and trying to get a degree. Uh, it would it terrify me, terrify me. I mean, it's funny talking about this. I still think, oh, my gosh, I still have to go and register at the Free State University to be, get my CFP. Like, I don't have to. No. I haven't done it for 15 years. It's fine. Not anymore. <laughs> Not anymore. But, so, but Nick, I think just to, to illustrate the point that you are making mm -hmm. is, and I think that's what bothered me about the school system, is that it was a one-size-fits-all. Yeah. And I didn't relate to that type. So not only didn't I relate to this, the subjects, but I didn't relate to that type of learning. 
the same way as you didn't. I mean, yeah. you needed pictures and that's how you learned. Like I can go to a, le a lecture and I retain nothing unless I write down everything they say. That's my learning style. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I think that's, as you get older, you understand that. And then you make sure that whatever it is that you do, you do it in that style. And that's where you're your best. Absolutely. The limitations that you hit your head against are not your fault. Uh, and it's not an indicator of your capacity. So for, for you... Okay. Or capabilities, absolutely. Like I know you're very active on LinkedIn. You've got some pretty famous hashtags already. Hazel GP being one of them, and uh, hazy after, one, hazy one. Thank you. Um, so yeah, uh, your after your uh, your three one twenty five i white BMW, the rocket. Um, I think that that's where it started. But you've done so much yes, incredible. Years, yeah, we. I mean, that was the beginning of the gym, right? I mean, 2010, 2009, around there. For you, mentoring, guiding, molding young ladies that are either starting their career or that you encounter that have potential, why is that so important to you? Why have you made that your focus, your passion? You know, Nick, I think um, as you get older, um, well, I suppose right through life, we go through this journey to kind of find out what makes us tick, what is our purpose, who are we really, not mm. what do we have. And I mean, I just, I was just thinking when you were talking about my fancy white BMW, and I love that car. But I mean, I now drive a basic Ford, and it's mm. been the most liberating thing in my life because as you get older and as you get wiser, you realize that things actually don't matter. Mm. And if people are going to define you or acknowledge you or value you based on what you have versus who you are, I don't want to be part of that. Absolutely. So, you know, that's, that's, that's part of kind of finding my passion and my purpose. Um, so, so what really led me into this journey? Um, it's quite interesting. I did, and it was right about when I started with you in the gym. So, I don't know, 2010, somewhere around there. Yep. Um, I was invited to do a photo shoot and a story on myself on the old Oprah magazine. We used to have Oprah magazine in this country. And I did that. And I got an email from a lady who said, um, you're probably not going to read, the essence was, you're probably not mm -hmm. going to read this email. Um, I know you're an important person, um, but I've seen your article and you inspire me and I want you to mentor me. And I live in Orange Farm. I don't have anybody that, I don't have means, sure. but also I don't have anybody who, they, they understand the value of education and the importance of getting a good job, but they don't know how to help me. Mm -hmm. And she ended off by saying, I'll probably never hear from you. And as soon as I got that email, I phoned her and she nearly fell off her chair. And I said, <laughs> I'm going to go into this journey with you. And that was kind of the, the beginning of it. And I, I went on a, oh, it was a two or three year journey with her, really just mm -hmm. mentoring her, helping her get through school. And um, she was also a girl of about 24. She had to drop out of school and matric because she had a child, but she went back and she was now in her matric year. Wow. And it was the most amazing experience. And we had the most, in built the most incredible friendship from it. Um, and I mean, she, I don't know where she is today because we've kind of lost touch, but we took it further because then I also said to her on Women's Day, I said, you've been given this gift, but there's a whole lot of people in your class that haven't been given this opportunity. So let's do something for Women's Day. Mm. And um, we we did, we did made them each write an essay on why they thought they should be part of this Women's Day experience. Wow. And then we took, I think, 15 women. And, you know, we sponsored them. We gave them a, a, a day at our offices. We exposed them to successful women, black mm. and white, so that they could see what they could be. Because it's quite important that they're not only exposed to the traditional success factor. Um, they had to see their own being successful. So we exposed them to, to that. We took them around the, the building and said, this is what a call center looks like. This is what an office looks like. Um, this is where we do presentations. And we really exposed them to the other part of life that they've never really seen. And we had a nice lunch for them and they had an opportunity to ask questions. I kind of had um, a mentor for each at the lunch that they had somebody to talk to as well as the whole table. And you know, we took photos, we gave them photographs afterwards, whatever, but we made it a really, really special day because what I wanted to do is not only offer them the experience, but try and make their mentors to the next generation right. or to their friends who hadn't been lucky enough 
to come that day. So, so that's that's how it started um, formally. Informally, I also had um, a PA called um, Portia. Um, mm-hmm. she, that was her work name. Her name's Deneo. Um, and I was looking for a PA and I was asking a whole lot of people, um, do you know anybody that's looking for a PA job? And one of my friends said to me, I don't know what this girl's capable of, but or what she does or what her qualifications are, but she's got such a great attitude. I think she's going to be good for you. Um, and anyway, so I called an interview and she just showed up with this big smile and this beautiful energy. And I thought, I don't care if you know how to do anything or not. Um, I can see the two of us are going to work well together. Right. And that was a formal mentoring or coaching arrangement, but we have stayed in touch. We're still great friends. Um, she's gone on to do great things, including becoming um, a qualified pastor or minister. I don't want to lie, but a caller. Um, she's done formal education. She's got the most beautiful family. Um, I, I was incredibly privileged to be asked to do the um, the speech at her 50th birthday. Wow. And for me to have watched that journey and to have become from a, a PA with no skills to to being part of her family effectively, to doing the speech, to in fact being at her bedside when she was having one of her children because I had a car and her husband had to catch the train. So, you know, there's those kind of things. And I just mm. it started helping me think I get so much energy out of this. This is my journey and this is my passion and this is probably my purpose. And from there, I've, I've just gone into that. And I, I do formal and informal um, kind of mentoring, coaching, um, uh, on-the-job trainings, um, and just little things like a coffee conversation where people will phone and say, can you just have coffee with me and help me with my confidence mm. or something mm. like that. And it's just I, I have a very busy life and a very busy job, and I don't always have that time. But when I give that hour or that half an hour, I walk out of there so energized that it gives me the wherewithal to do all the other things. Sure. So I, I know for, for, for sure that is my calling. That's unbelievable. I wanted to touch on the mentoring side from a woman mentoring woman because the sense I get in speaking to you, it's there, there's a more of a nurturing element than I think with, with, with men mentoring younger guys. You know, with guys, I think it's very much, okay, do this, don't do that. Okay, you did this, you shouldn't do that, which, which is a component of it. But I don't think there's as much of the nurturing side. And I think that's part of the, the, the beautiful female energy. How, how is that for you? How, how do you see a difference in, in the two? So firstly, I just want to say that I will mentor or coach anybody right. i'm not specific about women but women empowerment is really important to me so that's kind of my niche but i do um definitely um i'll mentor or coach anybody who needs my services or who feels they want to approach me um i find that with women who come to me um they buy into me they don't right. buy into what i can do for them so they relate to me and there's that kind of um I would guess that chemistry or that energy or that connection. And then from there, and once you've got that, Nick, I think what happens is people start feeling like they, it is a, sp- a safe space. They mm-hmm. can be vulnerable. They can be honest. And with that, you build incredible trust. And from the trust, you're enabled to do a whole lot of different things. Um, so, yes, I do think nurturing and caring is, is one of those things. Um and, you know, sometimes it's just guidance. It's not even a formal coaching or mentoring relationship. It's just come and be part of our, our panel or come and be part of this work stream or whatever the story is. So I get exposed from very many different angles and opportunities which lead to these beautiful destinations. Right. They often not, the starting point is often not the mentoring or the coaching. Um so yeah, it's quite interesting how, how it kind of develops. Um, but yes, I do think that you do bring a different um, element. And I think what you've got to do is you've got to be honest and authentic and obviously always confidential. I mean, that mm-hmm. goes without saying, but you've also got to hold people accountable and be firm. So if you want to be helped by me, the first thing we sit and talk about is what are you, what part are you going to play? Are you going to commit to doing your homework or your prep or whatever the, the, the issue is? Because I'm only investing in you to make you the best. 
you can be. So you've right. got to be committed to the journey. It's not one of those journeys where um, you're going to tick a box and say, I've had a mentor, I've had a coach. No. Right. Okay. Um, and, then, and then the other thing which kind of touches on sponsoring is, you know, you've got to find those people in your life who are going to say your name in a room of opportunities. Yeah. And I sure. try and do that for people that I meet or that I interact with or that I'm blessed to work with. And that, again, is, is male or female. Um, because you're not always in every room. You're not always exposed to every opportunity. And so I try and also play that part of making them known where they might not be known. Right. And sure, that's huge. I think that really comes down to finding that right relationship where you're finding people who have faith in you and trust you. And that's really an indicator of someone who wants your who wants the very best for you. Saying your name in a room full of opportunities, that's so well put. Um, I think I'm gonna make that the title of the video. That's perfect. And I think the other, the other important bit is mm. um, when you formally seek out a coach or a mentor, so that lady from Orange Farm or mm -hmm. whatever, um, that's your first step to saying, I actually am committing. Um, and that is the first step of saying, I want to be my best self. And by the way, my best self is not always a CEO of an organization yes. or um, three degrees or the car that you drive. No, it doesn't matter what your role is or what your level is. It's just about being your best and feeling your best. So you having the self-belief, the self-confidence, the, the, um, the mindset that says I'm great. Um, and I just want to share a, a story about a lady. Um, that I, I, and I don't want to say her name, but she works in the bathrooms at Oliver Tambo Airport. And right. I mean, I travel quite a bit and I often don't need the bathroom, but the point is I go in there every day that I'm at the airport and I hope that she's on duty. Why? Because she says, welcome to my office. Good yep. morning. She's got a pretty awful job, but she loves what she does. She engages with her customers mm -hmm. in a way that is exactly how a CEO of a, of a um, large organization does. So I want to tell that story about just to reinforce it's not about the level or the what. And she gets people lining up at the door. And guess what? She loves what she does. And she has a great day because people are nice to her because she's nice to everyone. And there's that upward spiral of energy and positivity instead of that downward spiral of saying, I've got a low level job. Mm -hmm. I'm worthless. I don't do anything sure. that people appreciate, you know, so that's a little example. And, and there's those examples all the way up the, the value chain. Right. That phenomenon. And, and what I love about what you're saying is seek out the people who almost inspire you through their behavior and their conduct. So we spoke a little bit earlier about safe spaces and trust. How important is that for you with, working with someone that there's that you create a safe place and that they trust you you know what nick i mean for me safe spaces confidentiality trust it's the holy grail it's the it's the basis of any relationship and whether it's coaching or mentoring or supporting or sponsoring it's that's the basis of of relationships mm -hmm. so for me it's a not negotiable um and you know, I, I put a lot of emphasis on it and obviously it also builds. It doesn't start on day one. Um, builds. Once I hear what they have to say, they hear what I have to say, we see the way we interact, it builds. Right. Um, and, and you can actually see how deeper and much more information and much more vulnerable the people get as that relationship and that trust builds. Um, and then you know that you've made a difference, you know, because you can't really always put a Band-Aid on it because you see the sore, so you put the Band-Aid on. You've got to get to what's causing the sore um, right. and, and helping them. And, and you know, I, I don't always make it easy for people. I mean, I, I've got people that say to me, I want to be better at presentation skills. I put them in the boardroom and I critique them, but I give them tips and, and, um, uh, just ideas of what to do better. And I make them do presentations and then there's, and I make them stand up tall and proud and with their shoulders back and their head up high. And they say to me, but 
I don't do presentations in my job. And I say, but imagine, mm. even if you're talking to your colleague or your boss, you've suddenly got a newfound confidence. You've suddenly got a newfound way of standing. And they hate it and they squirm and they, um, they, you can just see the stress in them. But years later, I get emails about how I changed their lives. And I didn't change it alone. We changed it together. Mm. Yeah. But it's about also helping people go where they're not comfortable going. So the only way you can grow is to go out of your comfort zone into that area of discomfort. And I spend quite a bit of time helping them understand that they've got to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Absolutely. Um, and I mean, even my staff, I mean, I'm not the most popular boss, but <laughs> after they leave me, do I get emails and phone calls about how I shape them and how when they were horrible to me because I was making them do things and encouraging them to be their best, that they should have listened and appreciated more. And, and that's great. I mean, you know, you can't also change everyone. Absolutely. <laughs> or help. And I don't about changing, by the way. Mm. That's my wrong terminology. We're not changing people. We're helping them be who they're meant to be. Right. Their best self. Sure. It, it, it's a challenge to help people evolve into their best versions. And sometimes but they're it's not ready. It, it's Correct. the absolutely. But, if they're not ready, they're not seeking my services. Right. Okay. 100%. That's when um, we kind of forcing it on them. You know, you have to do this or um, we encourage you to do this. But when they come to you, they might not be totally ready, but there's something in them that says, I want to take the step. Might take not be it, ready uh, for seconds, but I'm ready for a step. For the, for, oh, brilliant. What do you do when you meet um, or you meet young mentors or those who would like to mentor, or those that you've worked with that you feel should become mentors. How do you how do you empower them or teach them to be able to create those safe spaces with the people they're mentoring in order to build that trust? You know what? Um, differently, in different ways. Um, mm. Depends what the relationship is. If people are coming to me and saying, help me on this journey for me to do similar to what you do, we go through a process, I share some of my lessons, you know, there's a lot of stuff in books and on the internet, but at the end of the day, what's also important to me is authenticity. So you've got to take some of those lessons, some of those models, but do it in your own way. Mm -hmm. Be true to who you are. Um, and then role modeling, just watch me, listen to me. Um, and then you pick up according to your style and your personality, how to do some of those things. Um, and yeah, if they, if they go to another level and they ask me, sometimes I'm asked to sit in. Can you give me feedback to this session where I was doing some mentoring um, as to how you think I did or um, whatever? Um, you can only really sit into those kind of sessions, either a coaching or a mentoring session with permission of the person being mentored or coached, but when the space is safe enough, because otherwise they're not going to open up and then you can't really um, you see the person in their best action. Right. But yeah, I mean, that's kind of how we go about it. How, how and important? Or, to, yeah, sorry, go for it. Sorry. I just want to pick up on something that you said earlier about, um, you know, LinkedIn posts and things like mm. that. Um, Leg legendary so, LinkedIn posts. Thank you. And, and you know, the hazy ones, I've got this little hashtag. And it's interesting how I got that name, but that's a story for another day. You know, what I get often, and this has got nothing to do with mentoring or coaching, but what I get often is how are you always so upbeat? How mm. are you always positive? Why do you see the light when everybody else is seeing the darkness? The truth is some people are naturally like that, but that's not me. Mm. I work at it every single minute of every single day. It's a choice. It's an intention. It's a mindset. Um, and even the most negative person or the most, the person with the biggest load that they carry can be positive. Um, and one of the ways I keep myself positive, and accountable is to put in posts on LinkedIn. Right. To try and make somebody else's day positive and try and influence it. But I wake up in the morning and one of the first things I do is I think about today's post, which already puts me in a positive mindset. So, you know, just going through life, whether you've got a mentor or not, and but you want to just be that person. I think you said at the beginning something about light or lighthouse or something like that. Lighthouse. You just yeah. want to shine your light a little bit brighter. Some days it's going to be dim, some days it's going to be very bright, but it's an intention and it, it takes work, it takes mindset, 
it takes effort. Um, so my, my urge to everyone or my, my challenge to everyone is we live in a very challenging environment. Works challenging, economy, the state of the nation. Make a commitment to yourself to find one positive thing a day. So whether that's a LinkedIn post, whether that is picking a flower and smelling the roses, whether that is looking for positivity quotes, whether that is a gratitude journal, mm -hmm. it doesn't really matter. Absolutely. But find something every single day. And from my own experience, I can tell you that it's it just builds. Because you never go back to where you started. So yes, right. you'll go up and down. We're not machines. We, we're human and we'll have different emotions and better and worse days. But commit to yourself to find something positive each day that you can hold on to and that can keep you moving forward. Let's look for fuel for your lighthouse on a daily basis. Do more of what makes you happy. Yeah, Those kind of things. Absolutely. It might be two minutes of sunshine on a, when you've been sitting in an office all day. It's not always big stuff. Yes. But I, th th that's also the thing with your training that I love. When you travel, there's always pictures of you going outside and making time for walks, making time to get in the sun. And I think that's such an important lesson that if you're not making time for yourself, you're going to have a worse time. You're not going to have your best time if you're not making time for yourself. It's, it's so interesting, Nick. I mean, I used to read these uh, motivational quotes that said, uh, self-care, X, Y, Z, or mm. uh, don't forget to look after yourself. You can't pour, uh, pour from an empty cup, that kind of stuff. But I've experienced that, and you really can't. You can't. And what I've come to know is that self-care, and whether that is a long bath with bubbles, whether that's a walk, whether that's sunshine, whether that's a facial, it doesn't matter what that self-care is. It might just actually be a half an hour on the couch. Yeah. Um, it's not selfish. It, that is self-care because that is refueling you. So one of the things I do to refuel is I engage with people because other people's energy fuel me, no matter how tired I am. Other people need solitude to refuel. So whatever it takes, make sure that you're filling your proverbial cup. Um, find ways to do more of what makes you happy. Find a way to laugh every day or smile every day. I mean, look, I, I listen to Howard Feldman every single day. I, I can't bear the fact that he's not on air on a Saturday or Sunday. And I understand why. But yep. he makes me smile even though he's really covering very heavy news every day. Find that person that uplifts you. Don't hang around people that are going to drain you. Absolutely. You know, we talk about so whether it's at the water cooler or whether it's in life. Um, you can't always you work with or who you um, are forced to interact with. But when, yes. it, when you do have choices, take them and, work, you know, spend time with people who uplift you mentally, physically, emotionally. You know, do that kind of stuff. I mean, yeah. I, I remember mm. our gym sessions. I mean, gosh. I mean, it, was, it wasn't often about the kettlebell. It was often about the energy that you brought that got me swinging the kettlebell. That, that's well, what it is. That's what got me back. I think we could say kettlebells because you were doing double bells sometimes. <laughs> Always with black coffee. Um, yeah. But yeah, so, so, so Nick, those are the kind of coping strategies, um, positivity strategies that I employ every day. Um, and if we all just find what works for us, and sometimes the mentors, the prisoners can help you find it. We don't always give you the answers. We help you mm, find mm, it. Yeah. Questioning through, um, going through exercises, etc. And unpacking it and working with it. I think it's such a valid point with regards to we become who we hang around, right? You know, no uh, question. Aristotle said we, you become what you do but it's more you become who you hang around. And so choose the people that you want to be and find a way to hang around them. Yeah. In terms of sort of people building a career, whether it's in corporate, maybe in their own business, how important is mentoring, being a role model, or even just starting that journey to them and to their career, to their development and evolution? You know what? It's hugely different and um, hugely beneficial. And I think if I think about my own career and I even think about some of the people that I interact with on a daily basis, formally or informally, 
people are scared to ask, can I get a coach or can I get a mentor or will you mentor me mm. or will you sponsor me? Um, so, that, so that's number one. Uh, and then number two, at the, in the early stages of a career, people don't always know that there's such a thing. So it's about creating awareness right. um, and it's about um, just being there, I, I guess. I mean, would I have been somewhere different in life if I had a mentor? Probably not, but I might have got there earlier. Right. Um, so, so I think it's you know it's just, it's so interesting what you say, Nick, um, about how important is it. Sometimes it's also it's important, but you don't realize the impact that you're making. Um, mm. For example, people will come to me fifteen years later and say, "I remember when you spoke at our initial training or our um, induction, mm -hmm. and I watched you." Um, you know that kind of stuff. I didn't even know I was having an impact on that person's life. Um, sure. And that's one of many, many examples. So if that person had maybe said that to me five years earlier, I would have maybe said, let's have a coffee. Let's have a discussion. Where are you? What are you battling with? What are you doing really well and mm. with ease? How can you help someone else? How can I help you? Um, so it's about the awareness and then having the courage to ask whoever that person is, will you mentor me? Um, and your bosses are mentors, but they're not your only mentors. Sure, absolutely. That's power, you know. The, you, because you, you, you learn as much from great bosses as you learn from bad bosses. Yeah. But I think it's a combination of different things. And sorry, I did interrupt you, but I also mm. just wanted to say you spoke from a career perspective about you know finding the people you want to be with and hanging around them. Mm. But it's it's no different socially. Do you want to be in a in a social group where all they talk, do is talk about people or complain or whatever, or one foot here and one foot in, in mm. England, or do you want to be with people who are going to say we're here and we're making the most of it and we're having a good day? Um, on the exercise front, you know, mm. it's very easy to lie in bed early on a Sunday morning. Get into a group where you're accountable for going to, you know, making sure that you show up. So that getting into those groups are important in all aspects of your life. And, and what's what's really important, you asked me earlier about um, you know, the, the, um, the care and the attention mm. to detail and all of the people that are mental. It's also about holding other people accountable, but just being that presence and being that person that you're not going to say no to. Yes. So when you get into different groups, this one's going to uplift me from an emotional perspective. This one's going to uplift me from an exercise perspective. This one's going to help me with my career. You're a whole person. You're not a person at work or a person in the gym or a person in the classroom. You're a whole person. So everything that you do in all aspects of your life make you who you are and make you who you're meant to be. Right. So you can't that's only look it. at things from a singular lens. Sure. And that's, yeah, they make you who you're going to be. And that's the thing. We, that's who we end up, whether we want to or not. So we best pick our circles very carefully. I, I, I think I just want to correct you and say, mm. we don't make them who they're meant to be. They make themselves who they're meant yes. to be by entering into a formal or informal relationship. Perfect. Absolutely. Far better said. So speaking of said and saying, you, you, you have spoken at several events. I think you, you're speaking. How, how important is the speaking to you? Is it something that you're wanting to evolve and to grow as well? So, you know, I've always been, uh, by the way, also at school, I was the shy kid. Um, you wouldn't think so now. Um, no. nope. But I, I was the one that sat in a corner at a party. I was the shy kid that never put up her hand. I'm exactly the opposite. So I'm a great story of evolution. And transformation, I must say, you know, um, people mustn't be scared to transform. It's a very, very empowering journey. And, you know, we think about, I always use this analogy and everybody uses this analogy right. of that ugly caterpillar that goes into the chrysalis that appears as a beautiful butterfly. And that's exactly what it is. Um, and just to go on from that, you've never arrived. That's a continuous mm. uh, journey of growth. You never stop growing. Um, so, uh, in a lot of the roles that I've played at work, I've been required to do presentations and talks and things like that. So I've had quite a lot of um, experience in it. Um, we can always be better, but mm -hmm. um, that's 
that's enabled me to say yes when I've been invited to do a talk at maybe a women's event or I volunteer for the deal link and I, I have the privilege of speaking at their fundraising dinner every year so it's my my speaking is something that I use to convey messages and opportunities and possibilities right sure that's fantastic you get to share your light hopefully yeah. that's that's my purpose sure. share my light and let others illuminate from that sure and become their own lights so it's more you're more of a, a lighthouse more than a lighthouse you're a candle where you're passing your light on enabling others to light their on. light and pass it fantastic we can't we can't live life in isolation and just think about ourselves um you know we we talk often about mm. Um, when we talk about donations, and like people, there's that common saying that says nobody ever got poor by share by giving. Yes, I mean that was that was in the monetary sense, but I promise you, you just the amount of energy and passion and and growth and um, satisfaction that you get that I get from doing what I do, and ninety percent of it is giving. That's phenomenal. You don't get poor from giving. You don't get poorer from giving. What does the future hold? What are your plans? What would you like to do that like Boston marathons, New York marathons on a personal level from a business point of view with your career? What are you looking forward in the future for? Nick, I'm not sure I've got any more marathons in me, um, okay. but never say never. Yeah, um, exactly. As you know, the first one in uh, 2011, another one in 2014, and another one last year in 2023. Mm -hmm. So and after each one of those, that. you said, okay, I'm done. <laughs> but, but I also have to uh, caveat for anybody that's listening that I'm not a marathon runner. I do, I've done all of the marathons that I've done for a purpose. Mm. So I'm very cause driven. And I guess that resonates with why I do my coaching and mentoring. It's for a purpose. Um, sure. This is not to fulfill my days. It's like I get my pleasure from, you know, helping others. I, I remember you and I had a conversation early on in our relationships about why I stopped selling and went mm. into management. It's not because I couldn't sell and it wasn't because it wasn't more financially lucrative. Mm. I get my pleasure and what fuels me is helping others be great. Sure, um, that's awesome. You know, the same as from a work perspective, I, I work in a strategic position, but I'm not mm. a strategist. Yes, of course I can do strategy, but my gift is being able to translate that strategy into actionable um, steps that right. produce results. Right. So we've all got an aspect of everything to give. And um, it doesn't matter what you have and what you have to offer in life. You've all got a gift of some description. Ab now, ab let's yeah. find that gift and let's make it shine. That's phenomenal. We, we're doing. running we're running a little bit low on time and um, we're very appreciative because I know we have to stop just before nine. I think if there were, I'm going to ask you, I, I learned three great points for speaking from one of my mentors, a gentleman by the name of Nigel Reisner. And he said to me always, have three takeaways from every talk and then have the audience action something within 24 hours. And that's sort of how I've always structured my talk. So I think if we could look at three things that you would like to, that you feel people should take away from our conversation and what should they do within the next 24 hours to make a change, whether it's as a mentor or seeking a mentor or something along those lines? Sure, it's a tough question. Um, but I think first and foremost is open yourself up to the possibility mm -hmm. of what it could do for you and how it could help you be your best self. The second one is find who that person is. And that person could be multiple people for different things, as I've already said. Yes. So even if you don't go and find that person, take out a piece of paper or your cell phone, different generations, <laughs> and just jot down. For um, emotional support, this is my go-to person. For physical support, this is my person. For spiritual support, this is my person. For mentoring, this is my person. And just try and have that done. And, and then when you're ready, you'll do something about it. So the, those are two. And I think the third one is just believe in yourself. Believe what is possible. Your status in life today is not who you have to be yeah. or who you were designed to be. But having said that, 
to reiterate things that I've said quite a few times during today's session is it's not about what job you have or what status you have or the type of your car or your house. It's who you're meant to be and you're always going to be that person. At the, you are who you are at the right time. You know, you can shape certain things, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, certain things you can shape, certain things you've got to accept. But, you know, just seek out that mentoring um, possibility because they can help you through not only challenges, but also opportunities. Sure. Wow. Fantastic. And what step, what should people do within the next 24 hours to make a change? What's one thing they can do? I would say make a commitment to positivity and gratitude. Right. So I have a positivity sure. jar. Um, I have it right here. Okay. I have a positivity jar. I hey. um, try and find stuff. And yeah. every day I put a little piece of paper in. And, you know, when you're having a down day, open the jar and read it. So, I mean, that, that's a simple little thing to, to do. So, by the way, whether it's a gratitude jar or a positivity jar, it doesn't matter. Um, mm. You know, just make those those kind of small, small steps. And from those little steps, you're already in a different mindset, already in a different space, and that will catapult you into wherever else you're going. That's brilliant. Hazel, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for what you shared. I know this is going to have a profound impact on those who listen to it. And they they should, you know, that I, I love that positivity, Joe. I'm looking over sort of at the coffee station going, we need one of those in the gym. And I, I think that would be the most wonderful Very gift. Easy. Yeah. The most wonderful gift for someone is you give them a positivity job. And uh, absolutely exactly. incredible. Yeah. Thank you for the your gratitude energy. job. Job. Yeah, phenomenal. Just and and thank you for your energy and your attitude and your caring and the compassion that you bring to all of those around you. We're very very grateful to have you in our lives, because our lives are better thank for you, having Nick. you. Thank yeah. you. I, I think I just want to end by mm. saying I, I've just been thinking about the question that you asked. Mm. It's just show up as your best self. Right. That's, that's that's the one right. thing that you can do from now. Not even in the next twenty four hours. Show up for you as your best self. Oh, and um, yeah. and in the words of a of a of a good friend, um, I thank you for this huge privilege. Um, thank you for having me on air, and us. Us, thank you. I'm going to end the recording now, and then I'll just chat to you quickly. I love it. Okay. Right. <laughs> Thanks, Nick. <laughs>